Wagwan on YouTube figure here, welcome to today's Destiny 2 video. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the Crucible in Destiny 2. We're going to be talking about everything we know, about all the maps, the modes, and we're going to be going over all the little changes that have been made as well, so it's going to be a very interesting video. So if you do enjoy, make sure you slap that like button down below, and of course, if you have more Destiny content like this from me, be sure to subscribe. But anyway, let's get started. The Crucible is a key component of the Destiny franchise, it's a huge part of the endgame and it's where most of us spend our time. The Crucible is arguably what saved Destiny 1 and kept players playing consistently for the 3 years, so as you can imagine it's going to be an important factor in the success of Destiny 2. It would have been really easy for Bungie to just copy and paste the Crucible from one game to another and just tweak a few things. But they haven't done this, they've made some bold changes for the sequel. The most notable is that all game modes are now 4v4. Bungie believes this change will put a bigger emphasis on team play, but at the same time allow for effective solo play. The community has been divided on whether or not this change is a positive. Some arguments against this change are that the Crucible may be slower or that it may be too competitive. And this could be true, but from what we've heard from people that have played the game, it's the total opposite. The game looks to be as fast paced as ever, but with an added smoothness and polish. Having all modes reduced to 4v4 will also make balancing easier. Every time Bungie make a tweak to a weapon, they no longer have to take into account how it will perform in 2v2, or 3v3, or 6v6, because now all modes are essentially the same. So we might finally get that balance meta we've always wanted. We've also seen some significant changes to the UI and in-game notifications. If you take a look at the top of the screen, we can see that the score between the teams now takes centre stage, and either side of the score, we can now see how many players are on each team, what subclass they're running, and if they have their supers charged or not. This change will be very useful in more competitive matches. If you take a look at the bottom left, it is now announced when players collect power ammo and for what weapon. A pretty small addition, but again, this will be really helpful in competitive matches and will allow for players to prepare better for engagements. Another change is the fact areas of the map are now named and displayed under the radar. This will make callouts and map navigation much easier, and personally, I really like this change. The original Destiny game had over 15 modes, and that's not including the Mayhem or Inferno variations, so the player base was stretched really badly over numerous playlists, which often led to long waiting times for matches and just poor experiences. But towards the end of its life cycle in Destiny 1, we saw the removal of some playlists and a kind of mode rotation system. This narrowed the player base into less playlists and greatly improved matchmaking experiences. This is something Bungie will be aiming to do in Destiny 2. Bungie have made the decision to have less modes in the sequel, although most of these modes are yet to be announced. But the modes we have confirmed so far are Control and Countdown. Control is a returning mode from Destiny 1, but it's undergone some major changes. For example, flags A and C are now automatically capped at the beginning of rounds, flags no longer need to be neutralised, and matches will now only last about 8 minutes. A bunch of other changes have come to control, but I'm not going to go over them here. If you want to find out more, check out my video, I'll have links in the description that goes into great detail. But the second mode, Countdown, is a brand new mode exclusive to Destiny 2. Kind of. Countdown is the first attack and defense game mode in Destiny history. It's basically search and destroy. Teams have to eliminate each other or detonate a timed bomb to win. It follows a traditionally competitive formula which hopefully will work with Destiny's gameplay. These modes will be put into two different playlists, competitive and casual. Modes like Control will obviously be in the casual playlists, but modes like Countdown will be in a competitive playlist. This is the closest thing we have to a ranked playlist so far in Destiny, so it is a step in the right direction, but maybe not what many players were hoping for. In terms of the game modes, no more have been announced as of the recording of this video, but apparently there's going to be 5 casual modes and 2 competitive modes at launch. We don't know what the majority of these other modes are going to be, but I'd expect to see some returning Destiny 1 modes like Clash, Rift and Elimination to be announced later down the line. But where are we going to be playing these matches? Well, so far we've been shown four maps. Midtown, Endless Vale, Retribution and Vostok. Midtown is based in the last city. It appears to be designed for the new countdown game mode. Endless Vale is on Nessus and has been tailored to support control. Retribution looks like it takes place on a Cabal ship. 
and Vostog is in Destiny 1's Iron Temple social space. I have to say, all these maps look really good, they're not only aesthetically pleasing, but they also look like they're all going to be extremely unique in terms of how they feel. Maps are now being tailored to game modes, so now they'll all feel very different, which is something I'm really excited about, it'll add a lot of longevity. If you want a detailed look at all the maps I've just mentioned, I'll have links to where I got my gameplay from down below. Events are designed to keep players engaged. While they were present in Destiny 1, they weren't really up to scratch. But, Destiny 2 looks like it's going to change that. We've heard from plenty of sources that Bungie have a consistent content plan filled with events. But what events are we actually getting? The events we have confirmed so far are Iron Banner, Trials of the Nine, and Call to Arms. Iron Banner and Charles are returning from Destiny 1, but are no doubt going through a few changes. We have no idea what to expect from Iron Banner other than of course sweet loot. Hopefully though it has some new updated features, but my bet is it's probably just going to be more of the same. Trials however we know has been made 4v4 and is going to launch a few weeks after the initial release of Destiny 2. Call to Arms on the other hand is a brand new event but we know very little about it. The only info we have on this event comes from the Destiny wiki and it reads, Call to Arms is an event where players can face off in the Crucible for high level loot and special gear. Which if I'm honest sounds just like Iron Banner, but I guess we have to wait and see. The only other thing we know about Call to Arms is that apparently it's going to be the PvP version of Flashpoints. I'm really excited to experience the new Crucible. A lot of these changes seem really positive to me and I think they'll be good for the overall health of the game. However, something I am disappointed with is the fact they're not going to be private matches at launch. Bungie have made so many positive changes to support a competitive eSport community, but have completely squashed any hope of tournaments or anything like that by not including custom games. I think they've missed out big time. But that's just my thoughts on this subject. What I really want to know is, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, what are you happy about, what are you annoyed about, what are you most excited about in terms of the Crucible. Make sure you share your thoughts and your feedback. But on that note guys, that about wraps up today's video, I hope you enjoyed. I always try and make these videos as informative as possible, so if I achieve that, then make sure you slap that like button down below. And of course, if you want more regular Destiny content like this from me, be sure to subscribe. In addition, if you want to be awesome, then sharing this video would mean a lot, I'd really appreciate that. And if you're new around here and want to see more of my content, I'll have some of my relevant videos linked in the description. But in the meantime, I've been Fickle the Man, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!